Hi and welcome to Retro Tech Guardian. Today I'm going to do a video that shows you how I get uh, an image of the Xbox um, onto a little handheld CRT analog TV. Um, we'll be using it with, obviously Ted's with us again. Um, we'll be using an old video, an Xbox. Now I use an amplified aerial, you can use an amplifier and an aerial, um, but we'll be showing you how I've set all these up uh, and then you can tune in your TV and watch whatever you put into the input. I'm choosing an Xbox, you can choose anything on this particular machine with uh, composite video. Um, so yeah, so uh, I made this video basically, uh, I had a viewer get in touch called Jonathan from America who uh, kindly emailed me and sent me photos of his collection of these little, lovely little Sony Watchman TVs he has. Uh, I'm dead jealous. They're really nice little collection. I will put a link in the description to the website that shows you the readers page where I put these photos up. Um, I do need to add a description and everything, but like I say, I work full time. I'm doing this in my part time in my spare time, so please bear with me. I will get through that. But you can certainly go and have a look at the pictures there. So thank you, Jonathan, for getting in touch and giving me a bit more to add to the website. Right, okay, so let's clear all these things away. Sorry, Ted, you're going to have to go over there a second. Actually, let's keep you over there. Right, so we'll put the telly out of the way. We'll move all this off here. So we'll show you what we've got first. Okay, so I'll be using this JVC video. Um, it's probably a late 90s um, video. Uh, I chose this one because it has a couple of auxiliary ends, which is what we need to be able to put a signal in to transmit back out. Okay, so on the back, just to show you dead quick, we'll turn it around this way anyway, because we're going to be showing you the connections. So we'll turn that round. Okay, so on the back um, we have RF in, uh, sorry, antenna in, RF out. Uh, that's what we use to display the signal around. And you can see AV2 in and AV in, one and out. Uh, we also have uh, audio out here, which we're not using. But the reason why I like this particular video is it's got an RF out on, test or off. So we'll be looking at that as well in a bit, a little bit later on. So we're going to basically connect the Xbox to it. And like I say, you can connect anything on this one that has composite video. Now I use a little SCART block like this that has SCART on one end and it has the phono connections for video, uh, audio and S video connector. Now this one I like because it's got a little switch on there saying in and out. Now you can buy ones that are solely output and they won't work. You need to make sure you get an input one. I bought this one because obviously it's in and out. I can use it for both. So I plug this into AV2 in. It's set to in, the little switch. Now this Xbox lead, this is an older Xbox. Um, it's just a spare Xbox I've got lying around. It doesn't work very well. The hard drive no longer works. Since there's no hard drive in the top, as you can see. Um, so I use this just for testing on this. Uh, and it comes with the old-fashioned uh, composite connections and the HD video connections, which used to be the RGB. Now on the little controller here, the, the little plug, sorry, the plug's in the back, you've got an output to TV or HD. Now, we want to plug it out to TV. This doesn't do HD, and even if it did, these little tellies don't do HD, so no point. So the first thing we'll do is we'll connect all of them up. So we connect yellow to yellow, red to red, white to white. Then we grab the Xbox, and we turn that round. Now, for your input, obviously it's just that, switch to TV, 
and then plugged into the back. Now we don't need these other bits of cable, so we'll just let them drop down here out the way. We can plug in the video ready. Okay. So that's plugged in. And then So that's plugged in, ready to go. Now there's the power lead for the Xbox. I'll plug that in at the end. Now, like I say, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Some people come out of here with the RF out socket here and will go to a, um, a TV signal amplifier or booster. Uh, and you can amplify the signal to that and then plug an aerial into the booster and that will transmit across. I wanted a few less wires around and a few less plugs around. So I went for one of these cheap amplified TV aerials. It is really cheap. Now I've left the screws off this to show you what I've done on the inside. So now this is designed to work the other way. This is designed to take in your TV signal by connecting to this aerial and then amplifying it back out to go into your TV. Now that's the wrong way around for what I need. So. What I've done is I've snipped the connections there. I don't know how well that shows up on the camera, but I've snipped those connections there and I've connected the input, which was um, this, which has now become the output because I've connected that to the output stage here. And so this is now the output. And now this little connector is the output of that which is technically the input so this is the signal that's getting inputted and then that gets amplified and sent out to this so as you can see that's a female end there's a male end on there that goes into that so we plug that in there it comes with a little power supply so we'll just plug that in and then when you turn this on and plug it in And switch the switch on. You got a lovely little blue LED light there. So I'll just cover that back up for now. And then on the back, there's little stands. So you can just stand it up there if you want. Now, that's basically it. Okay. Now, we do need to see the other side in a sec. So I don't know how successful this is going to be, spinning all of this round at the same time. So now that's all the connections done, we'll spin this round a little bit. See if we can spin it round enough without dropping everything on the floor, eh? That might be a good start. Right, so we'll spin all this around. Okay, so we can see the video in operation. So, okay, we'll now turn the TV on and we'll turn it to TV. You'll see the screen comes on and we'll go to tuning here. And as you can see, it looks like it's going to pick signals up, but these are just atmospheric signals it's picking up. There is no broadcast in the UK. So it doesn't pick anything up. I've got this set to channel 36. You can set it to 36 or 40 on the back of the video. So we operate the video. As you can see, it comes on. Now we need to change channel on this because we need to have it on this to say auxiliary two. So if you come down one, you'll see that now says AU two. So that's now on auxiliary two. So now that's on there, we turn this on which then sends the signal into the video. Video processes the signal, sends it back out to RF to tune. So we'll let that connect up first and turn on. And now we should be able to, and there you are. There's your Xbox 360 Live. And that's how we get a signal. Now, Obviously, you don't want to amplify your signal too much. Um, there is laws regarding um, transmitting um, TV signals, uh, on, especially on these frequencies. So 
obviously checking your own country and your own region, make sure that you're, you know, not committing any offence or breaking any laws doing it. But general rule is if you, I mean, if I take this a bit further away, I can't really show you, but if I take this further away, the signal drops quite quickly. Uh, no one in the next house would be able to receive this. I, I walk about eight feet away from it and then I start to lose the signal. So no one else will be picking this up. So now there's no sound on this, obviously, copyright reasons. Like I say, I will be doing... Uh, I've got a little Arcos, which I'm going to connect instead of the Xbox 360. Now, on the back, there was that little jumper that let you connect to check uh, your RF signal in, if I can remember where that was, on the back of here. Uh, no, not there. Try that side. Let's turn it around, actually. So, let's get that. Actually, let's put that that side. I don't want that breaking. So on here, there was a little switch that let me test for a test signal. Now, as you can see, that's the test signal. And if I flick it back to on, if I can reach the switch, let's turn that around again. Switch it back to on and then back to Xbox. And then you can also flick it off, which we don't need. So, oh, needs to tune in again, does it? There you go. And then obviously, if you had sound connected or uh, you could put a DVD player in, uh, you could sit around the house and watch a DVD if you wanted to on this. It doesn't have to be this small a screen. As you can see from Ted, he's absolutely tiny, this thing. So you don't have to use just that size. You can... Uh, obviously use a big CRT TV as long as it's got an analog signal and sit and use your analog uh, obviously you can connect up wireless controllers to this you could sit and play games on a obviously a slightly bigger TV I think I think my eyes would be gone in seconds if I tried to play a game on that but anyway that's how you connect it so I'm just going to turn this off and what I'll do is while this is still connected I'll flip this round again so you can see the connections one more time. And I'll just talk you through them one last time. So, you have a connection in. Now, some videos will have um, an input on the front, say an auxiliary, whatever, with um, some of them do come with um, the composite in on the front or on the back. Some have just SCART, which is why I've had to buy that SCART adapter. If it doesn't need a SCART adapter and you've got composite video in on the front or auxiliary in with these photo connections, you can connect it that way. You've then got, obviously, the output from that, which goes into here. It gets processed by the video and then sent back out through the RF signal, which is then getting amplified by that aerial. And that's basically it. And that's how you can get anything that you plug in. So remember, it could be you can find an old uh, Freeview box uh, that's got composite out or a SCART out because it's SCART to SCART would work on that. If, if you can find anything that's got a SCART connector or a composite video connector, you can actually buy a HDMI to composite video adapter uh, which will convert the digital signal back to an analog signal for you. Um, you can buy them so basically you can plug in absolutely anything you want. There's nothing stopping you plugging in an Xbox 5 or uh, an Xbox 5, what am I on about? PS5. Um, you can see I don't do the modern tech that much. Um, and the new Xbox, if you wanted to, with HDMI. You can do um, any HDMI, so like an Android TV box. You could watch Netflix on this. You can obviously watch Netflix through your Xbox. Uh, download the app there and watch it that way. So you can watch whatever you want on this, whatever you put through there. And it's a really simple little thing, and it works extremely well for what I need to show this. I will be swapping the Xbox out for something that's a bit quieter. You can hear that buzzing in the background. Um, and it will be, I've got a little Arcos, which is a little seven inch display, and it's not an internet tablet. It's uh, a lot older than that. I will be showing that off in one of my videos, but I will be using it from now on to here, because then I can add 
uh, music uh, that I've got the rights to that I can then transmit uh, and then you can see the signal coming across the TV and hear the sound. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Please check out my channel for other videos and please check on the links below and have a look at Jonathan's lovely collection of TVs. Thanks for looking. Goodbye.